it's the first interaction I get all day and it's the freaking robot. Thanks for the money. Well guys, it's time. This video is one I have been considering making for quite some time at this point, and now my hand has finally been forced, so here we are. Mr. Beast videos are getting a little bit strange. This is something I have been privately thinking for quite some time at this point, and now I want to talk about it. Now, if you don't know who Mr. Beast is, then I'm not really sure how you managed to find this video. I don't think you can go onto YouTube these days and not have a Mr. Beast video be on the front page. And I'm assuming that if you don't know who Mr. Beast is, then this is your first time on YouTube, and your fresh, unaltered homepage would definitely have something from Mr. Beast on it. I was actually curious and went on three different browsers in incognito mode, and for all three, if you go onto YouTube, the video we're going to be talking about today is one of the first three things on the YouTube homepage. All of this is to say, I'm going to assume you know who we're talking about, but you may have not seen his most recent upload, which actually just came out a few hours ago. Survive 100 days trapped, win $500,000, where he takes two people, puts them into an isolation chamber, and if they can last 100 days inside, then they both get to split 500 grand. Pretty crazy, and definitely not the kind of content you would have seen on YouTube just a few years ago. Mr. Beast has permanently changed the landscape of YouTube, and whether or not you think that's a good thing, that's not what we're really going to be focusing on today. What I would like to talk about today is the nature of this kind of content, and how it's getting a little bit too far out there for my personal taste. Now, I've said many times before on this channel that I'm not really a fan of Mr. Beast. I've never watched a single one of his videos from start to finish. It's just not my kind of content. That's not to say that I dislike him as a person. I don't really have a reason to like him or dislike him as a human. But when it comes to his content, not my cup of tea. However, with that being said, I can still recognize that he's done a lot of good and his content has helped a lot of people. And I think it's pretty cool that he's still doing videos like this when he doesn't have to whatsoever. I'm going to start this video off with a bit of defense for Mr. Beast because I don't really want this to come across as me just coming on here and hating on the guy because that's not really what I intend for this video to be. It's something a bit more specific than that and it's all going to tie together in the end. Do not fret. Now one thing that I can respect about Mr. Beast, like I said, is that he is still making this kind of content where about half his videos, the general focus is giving people money. Now why do I respect this? well because he doesn't have to do this whatsoever. I think a lot of people, when they think about YouTube ad revenue, they go back to those numbers that were accurate like 10 years ago. The whole dollar to two dollars per thousand views metric. These days, that is no longer accurate unless your channel is very controversial and a lot of your videos end up getting restricted ads. Even the websites like Social Blade that claim to be pretty accurate often underestimate by quite a large margin, so most people are pretty in the dark about what YouTubers actually make. I, being a YouTuber am not so much in the dark. And I will tell you right now that one to two dollar per thousand views metric is super outdated. And that estimate on Social Blade, the absolute highest end of the spectrum, is about half of what most YouTubers are actually making. These days, people are making anywhere from eight to twenty dollars per thousand views. Some people even make more if you're in specific niches. And people like Mr. Beast are going to be getting a ton of money per thousand views. I went and did a little bit of math, and across all of Mr. Beast's channels, he has about 52 billion total views, which at a very low estimate for a channel like Mr. Beast at $10 per thousand views, that is $520 million of YouTube ad revenue. Now, of course, that's before taxes, but still half a billion dollars as a low end estimate from YouTube is not too shabby. And of course, that does not include the probably one to two million dollars he charges per video for sponsorships. So add in, I don't know, another quarter billion dollars from sponsorship money. And also, I think it's important to mention that I did not add any of the views from his channels that translate his already existing videos into different languages, because YouTube pay does vary pretty drastically depending on what country is your main demographic. So I would not be surprised if Mr. Beast has made well over a billion dollars from YouTube. Now, why is this important? Well, mainly because how many people do you know, yourself included, that would make a billion dollars and still decide to clock into their day job? Probably not that many. So I think 
think it's pretty cool that Mr. Beast continues to make these kinds of videos, especially ones where he's just going around and saying, hey, do you want a house? Here, take it. Thanks for delivering a pizza. If Mr. Beast wanted to, he could fire his entire team, get an editor and a thumbnail creator, and probably make about 25 to 30 low-cost videos before people started to lose interest and wanted the old Mr. Beast back, get a few billion views, make a couple hundred million dollars, and then retire, drop off the face of the planet, and would have successfully created generational wealth that his grandchildren's children's children's children would enjoy. So I think we could probably all agree that it's pretty cool that he's still doing stuff like this, even though there's really no reason for him to be. However, with all of that being said, I feel like the videos he is choosing to do these days are getting a little bit too weird. Apart from one or two videos that I'll talk about in a second, most of the videos that Mr. Beast made where he was giving away all of this money was people playing a giant game of hide and seek or like a bunch of people playing a big game of soccer with the occasional out there video like who can keep their hand on the Lamborghini the longest, whoever does keeps it, stuff like that. But his last two videos have been survive 100 days trapped when $500,000 and then $10,000 for every day you survive in a grocery store. Now these two videos being uploaded back to back is what inspired me making this video. It seems like the Mr. Beast channel is starting to take a turn from like weird extreme game show-esque type challenges to stuff like, okay, we're gonna offer people a lot of money in exchange for them going through some sort of post-war 1950s-esque psychological torture testing. Now obviously these videos are done by people that want to be there. I'm not saying that the Mr. Beast crew is like forcing people into these situations, but I feel like we're starting to tinker on an edge that's pretty delicate. Now if you watch this video, it's not like these two are in solitary confinement or anything. They have pretty regular interaction with other people. They have the option to buy stuff like movies and other electronics with their money. However, I don't really think that changes the fact that we are now monetizing what are basically government experiments on YouTube, and the natural progression of content like this is to make it crazier. I was really confused when I saw a bunch of YouTubers making videos on the whole Squid Game reality show situation, talking about how the show was unsafe and it was exploiting the working class, which are not things I disagree with, don't get me wrong, but I expected after seeing videos like that for a video like that to be made about some Mr. Beast videos that I've seen since. Because they've gotten to the point where I've got a question, are these videos safe? Sure, these people might not be in physical danger, but when you think about the mental stress that these situations must put people in, I don't really know if they're safe anymore. Like I said, these people are not really in isolation, they can leave whenever they want, but what does it do to a human brain to be quote, trapped in a room like this for a hundred days? Knowing that if you leave or you give up, you throw away life-changing money. I'm no doctor, I'm not an expert, but I would have to imagine going through something like this is going to have some permanent effect on something. I feel like this kind of video where you have another person there, you're allowed to do certain things, you see other people relatively frequently, is probably where we have to draw the line, right? Because if not, what's next? 10 days in solitary confinement? 5 days in a sensory deprivation room? I mean, where do you guys think this becomes unethical? When does it become monetized human testing? I mean, if you watch the $10,000 every day you survive in a grocery store video, around the 18-19 minute mark on day 44, the guy hears something and presumably thinks it's another person, and it turns out to be a robot bringing him a shopping cart full of money, and the look on this guy's face as he realizes it's not a person to talk to is insane. This guy has a shopping cart full of $100 bills being wheeled towards him, and he looks 100% defeated. That's how disappointed he was when he realized it wasn't a person coming to see him. These videos are getting to a point where they're not that many levels away from just being straight up experiments to push humans to their limits. A lot of people online were saying they would have stayed in that grocery store for months, but that's how arduous these kinds of situations are for the human brain. This guy only made it 45 days, and I bet that's a lot longer than most people could actually last. There's a reason solitary confinement is considered a violation of human rights by the UN. I feel like Mr. Beast and his team are smart enough to not really go too much further past these last two videos. I feel like these concepts are kind of the limit for this kind of content, but even drawing the line here, I still feel kind of weird about these videos. I don't know, to me it just feels wrong to seek out these people, put them in a situation where they reach their mental lowest, and then monetize it with the justification of, hey, we're giving them money, so it's fine. Again, like I said, I know all these people volunteer to do stuff like this, but I don't really know how much better that makes it. When it's something like a one or two day endeavor where you're playing a really long game of hide and seek, or you're trying to keep your hand on a Lambo, that's a bit different. But when it's a video more like this, when it's just this open-ended concept of, hey, we're gonna 
going to give you money every day you can go through this, and it's something that you can never possibly imagine the effects it's going to have on you. I just feel like that's not right. Of course, this is all just my opinion. I'm not really trying to change anybody's mind with this video, but with these videos being uploaded back to back, it reminded me of a few other ones I've seen in the past, like one where he gave a guy $10,000 every day he survived in a, quote, prison, and another one where he gave a guy $500,000 if he stayed in a house in a circle for 100 days, and those were questionable in their own right, I think, but they had access to a whole lot of stuff. They were talking to people every single day. They had games, they had electronics, they had things that made the experience a whole lot easier. These last two were getting dangerously close to who can stay in solitary confinement for the longest, and I think that's a dangerous road to go down. I just hope that Mr. Beast draws the line here and furthermore takes a few steps back. I understand that for some people these videos are entertaining, but I feel like it's the wrong kind of entertainment. Well guys, what do you think? Am I overreacting about these videos? Don't get me wrong, I don't think Mr. Beast necessarily means any harm by making these. I just think it's pretty easy for somebody in a situation like Mr. Beast to get caught up in the mindset of bigger is better and feel like there's some pressure to get more and more insane with every upload. And it seems like that's the mindset Mr. Beast and his team are in right now, and I feel like it's going to end up catching up with them if they don't rope it in just a little bit. If not, in a few years, I fear the YouTube homepage is just going to be human experimentation, and not the good kind. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Thank you.